Hey guys, Brian here with Mustang Mods EcoBoost Garage, and today we're going to be troubleshooting my door speaker noise that I'm hearing on startup on my 2019 EcoBoost Mustang. So I hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video, but uh, this issue's been bothering me for a long time. So I figured today would be a good day to uh, gain access to the door and uh, see what the heck's going on in there. Uh, I've seen a lot of other guys uh, on these Mustang EcoBoost forums on Facebook and whatnot uh, posting questions about this very topic. So I figured it would be a good opportunity to maybe answer some questions for all of us. Uh, I know that I've been having this problem on my car for probably over a year now. Uh, where whenever you start up after the, it seems like it's only happening after the door has been um, exposed to water, whether it's been washed or, you know, whether it's rained heavily or something like that. Water is ingressing into the door panel somehow, maybe uh, getting to the back of the speaker, and until it all dries out, uh, the, the, the issue is basically on startup, you'll hear this crackling sound coming from your door speaker, and it's really kind of annoying. And so uh, today we're going to basically open up the door, and I'm going to run some water over it and uh, see if I can figure out where the water is coming from and uh, see if I can isolate maybe which wires it's touching. And if so, maybe we can just put some, you know, environmental protection on them or uh, put some kind of silicone or something like that on them so it uh, prevents the water from getting in there. But anyway, that's the plan. So I hope you guys follow along and uh, maybe this uh, helps a few of you guys out there as well. Okay, guys. So the first step we're going to do is to get this door panel off. Um, so basically, you've got a couple of bolts on the bottom, uh, and you've got, uh, there's a bolt behind here. You've got to tape off this window trim panel and disconnect the, the harness for that. And then there's two 7 millimeters bolts right up inside of here, and you've got to take those off. All right, so uh, i got the two bolts on the bottom off. Got the two bolts on the bottom off. Now we're going to try to get this window panel off. Basically, you just have to kind of pry up underneath here, and there's some little snaps. Basically, we just have to put the tool in here. I'm just using a, a little plastic uh, pry tool. I just have to put it in there and pry up in the corner, and then this whole panel gets loose. And I use the same tool to go between the door and the panel along the sides and pop them out because you have a whole bunch of these little white plastic pieces in there that are snaps. They just snap into place. So I'll show you those once the panel is out so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so now I pried the re this the rest of the way out. It just kind of snaps. You can see that there's um, these things right here. One, two, three in the back, and then one in the front that hold it in place. So basically that's what you're trying to pry out. If you put pressure up there, you can get that to pop out. And then as you're lifting this out, the rest of them will kind of snap out. Uh, and then you just got to disconnect the wire harness right here just by pushing that little thing in and popping that out. Now your panel's loose. Um, next thing we're going to have to do um, is get the, I think there's a 10 millimeter bolt in here that we got to get access to, that we had to get access to. And then there's another one back up in here. So to get that one, you're going to have to kind of open the handle, and then right in the corner here, there's a little cutout of that plastic backing piece. So you just got to stick a, a 90 degree pry tool pick. Where my tool go? Here we go. All right. So yeah, so I just got a 90 degree pick. So I'm just going to use this to go in that little corner and then pull that out and then that panel should pop out and you got a 10 millimeter bolt that's right behind there. Alright, so you can kind of see where I've got my tool up inside of there. So that's what you got to pry. Now, obviously when I move the handle, I can't really do this while I'm holding the camera, so... 
Okay, so right now you can kind of see I'm just putting my tool in the corner here. I'm going to, whoop, ah, that little scratch. Damn it. Now that I got it back in there, I can just pop it out. Okay, I didn't scratch it too bad, no big deal. But there's your piece. And right behind it is our 10 millimeter bolt. See the door is already trying to pop out of position right now, even without me uh, getting the bolt all the way out. So there it is. Now the bolt fell inside of there, so I'm gonna have to wait until I get the door all the way off to be able to get that out, probably. But now I can move the door, as you can see, and the only thing securing it now is just the uh, the cable. So. Able to get the bolt. There it is. All right. All right, guys. So it's really kind of hard to see up inside of here, but basically, here's your here's your cable right there, and it basically lives inside of that little recess right there. So. All right. So. Oops. The door is basically sitting on that hook right there. You just have to lift it off. And then the same thing on this side, it's just kind of sitting on that edge right there. So you just got to lift it off. To get the door all the way off, you have to disconnect these three things, basically. That cable has to pop out. This harness has to pop off and it basically just has a little quick release right here. And then this harness right here, it's just kind of tricky because you don't really realize which one it is, but this is the little, quick release right here on this small harness. Now when you're looking at the back side of the door, this is where the cable goes through. So you basically have to just, on the inside right here, you have to squeeze these things together on the cable itself. You just have to squeeze it together with a pair of needle nose or I just use like a little prying tool to pop it and then it pops through. And here's the one cable assembly which looks normal, it's the same color, but this other black one over here, as you can see, it's kind of deceiving because you can't, you see this? This housing kind of looks like where you gotta push, but it's not. You have to push the little teeny plug on there to pop that out. Those are those little white things I was talking about, so there's a whole, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four of those. So if you just pop, put your uh, tool in between the door and around where those things are at, you can pop them out. And then you also got these clips here and this and this. So all those clips is what aligns the door and gets it to pop into place. So just be careful when you're doing it so you don't break those clips off, but um, you know, you just gotta, gotta kind of pry it with a little bit of force and kind of a sharp motion and it should pop out. Looks like I may have actually damaged one already. All right, so as you can see, my speakers are not factory. I've already been in here before replacing these. That's how I know how to do the door panel. But um, I've got these Infinities over here that I installed. And then down here, I've got the Focal integrations. And those were a component set. So it came with the tweeters that are in the, uh, in the arms, the upper arms, the risers, or whatever you want to call it. So. I've already been in here, and then, you know, when you get these from Crutchfield, it comes with this, uh, this bracket. Um, it basically goes in between, because the, the factory speakers are all big one giant assembly. It's, it's, it has that plastic housing built into it. So you have to basically uh, use that bracket that they give you, cut the little tangs out so it fits, mount the speaker on here, and then you mount this in where the factory speaker goes. And on this one, I actually used the factory housing, and I cut it out a little bit to get, get it, uh, the Infinity to fit. 
and uh, then mounted that one in there. And everything fits nice. Now I just got to figure out where this water or whatever problem I'm having is coming from. And it seems to be coming from this speaker, so I might pull the speaker out or I might just get access to the back and see if I can see where water's coming through when I put some water on it. Okay guys, so now with the door panel all accessed, um, I went ahead and took this plastic piece down so that we can see up inside of here. So I'm not sure if you guys saw that or not, but basically all the water is coming right inside of the door if I'm pouring on the outside of the window. So that basically means that anytime you wash your car, you're going to have water spraying on the inside of your door. So everything's just getting wet. So that's the problem. That's what I assumed that it was. I just didn't verify it until just now. Um, and I was even putting a little bit of pressure on the window like that to simulate the door being closed. And it, there's such a gap here, it just, it just goes straight down inside of there. And I even felt on the back side of the speaker back here, and the wires are wet. I mean, I could feel the wire harness in my hand right here, and it's soaking wet. Out of curiosity, I'm going to see if, uh, if it makes the crackling noise now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start it up. interference in 2020 was an outrageous assault upon our republic and upon the american voter Terrible all right so i just thought it to make that country. noise by we'll wiggling some of the wires back the here i guess maybe election. what's happening is that the uh, the water is touching the connection of the speaker back here and it's touching the frame of the car so it's grounding it out and it's causing that crackling noise but I don't want to sh yep, there you go. See that? So that's that's the, what the problem is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the speaker off, and I'm gonna seal up the the connections with some silicone when it's dry, and uh, that should help fix the problem. So right here, I'm just gonna take the speaker out. Um, just seven millimeter bolts. There's three of them holding it in. All right, guys. So here's the back side of the speaker, and as you can see, the um, the connections right here. So this, well, first of all, that connection is a little loose. I'm going to tighten that one up. This one right here um, was kind of maybe rubbing on the frame or something. And if the water is in between where it uh, where it gets close to the frame, then it may be shorting out, and that's what's causing the noise. So I am going to tighten this connection up and I'm going to put silicone around it to prevent it from chafing. Yeah, I'm looking at the wire here and I can see some green corrosion on there, so it's definitely getting wet and it's definitely part of the problem. Um, also, you guys may have different looking connections or whatever. I think these, these ones were from the kit that I got. Um, I can't remember if it was or not. I, I know that I had to reuse some of the stuff and I, and, um, I had to, you know, basically fabricate this harness from from here to here that basically came with the kit so I'm not sure what, what yours is gonna look like all right so I, right now I've just got some uh, RTV uh, silicone rubber sealant um, you can get this at any kind of hardware store I get this from work I'm just gonna take some and dab it around these ah uh, end pieces here all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do this to both connectors and we'll see if that helps when it dries up. I'm going to put a little bit of that same RTV in the back side of this connector just in case. Right here and right there. So kind of goop it up on there. All right, so I'm gonna let that stuff dry for a little bit and then we'll put everything back together. All right guys, so while that's drying, I figured I'd take the opportunity to uh, kind of bring up the date on what's the plan with the Mustang. So, but basically what the plan is, I'm gonna be getting a, um, a bigger turbo kit. 
or a custom built turbo installation on the vehicle. Um, I've been trying to narrow that down over the last couple of weeks and you know at first I was thinking NX2 but with NX2 you're kind of limited with uh, the amount of you know high, uh, higher range power uh, that I would like to achieve. My, my, my goal for this car is to definitely get it above 600 maybe 650 wheel horsepower. Um, I definitely want to be into the drag racing scene a little bit more and uh, getting into the 10s, possibly even into the 9s, uh, in which case I'll have to do some more modifications to the car, roll cage, maybe parachute and all that stuff. But for right now, my, my goal is just to get into the 10s. So to make that happen, I want to get as close to 600 wheel horsepower as possible. I want to get a bigger turbo, and I've kind of got it narrowed down between either the EFR, uh, Borg Warner EFR kit, um, you can get from full race, a couple different distributors have those, um, you know, uh, function factor performance and uh, CPE I think also sells a kit and uh, you know there's a couple different uh, variations of how you can have that uh, you know installed in the vehicle. You have different uh, AR sizes um, and uh, you can have an option for external weight gate, internal waste gate and whatnot. So I'm still trying to weigh all those different options out. And the other one that I've just recently uh, been turned on to is the Zona Rotor. And it really seems to catch my interest because their design for their um, turbine wheel is a little bit different than everybody else's. And basically it's going to allow for more exhaust gases to escape to, to prevent back pressure buildup. And it's still maintaining your, you know, um, your shaft speed which is going to basically allow you to achieve the maximum horsepower ratings that you want without uh, compromising on a quick spool. Um, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. To me, it seems, it seems to me like uh, for what my application is, it just seems like it's, it's the best design. The only thing is, is that I don't see that offered in a kit for the EcoBoost. I would have to go through a whole process of fabricating charge pipes, fabricating uh, maybe a downpipe. I don't know if there's a way that you could use one of the other kits. Downpipes is like a starting point, and then from that, maybe you know, customize what you have to customize to get everything to work. When it comes to oil lines and water coolant lines and stuff like that, or you'd have to fabricate everything. So that seems like it's a little bit more of a bigger task. But I definitely want that that turbo in my car. So I'm going to do some more research over the next couple of weeks. I'll be ready to make a purchase probably by the end of July. And uh, then hopefully I'll have everything sorted out, get the kit, and then getting that installed and put in the car, and uh, then see what kind of tuning we can get uh, as far as horsepower uh, gains out of that, uh, with you know without doing any of the the engine stuff that I have planned for later in the future. So with a bigger kit, with a bigger turbo rather, you're going to basically put the car up to the limit of what it can push on the factory block. Um, I'm also probably going to have to increase the fuel system components, maybe like the high HPFP um, injectors to run fully E85 eventually. I think I'm going to do it step by step. Get the turbo kit, get that installed, do a tune to get it up uh, to you know whatever I can out of that on 91 pump gas and E80, uh, E30. And then eventually maybe upgrade the fuel system components, see if I can boost that up to E50. Um, and then once I Get, the, uh, get ready to build the block and do all that stuff, then I can go full E85 and take it to the next level. So, so that's, that's the immediate plan. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys stick with me. I hope you guys like the plan. hope you guys like what's coming along with the car. And I hope this video helped anybody out because I know that I've seen a couple of guys posting very similar questions on Facebook. So if you guys see this video, then you're welcome. <laughs> what could I say except you're welcome? I went ahead and cut out a piece of plastic and I'm just going to take some sealant and seal around the edge of it basically and I'm going to stick it inside of that hole on the back side of the speaker so it prevents water from intruding anymore. Without making too big of a mess. <sighs> All right. So 
so I went in from the back side and I put that, that plastic piece on after I installed the speaker. It was still sticky with the, uh, the residue of the sealant, so I think I got it on there where it's at least acting as a shield against the connections and the wires. So hopefully once that dries, um, I shouldn't have any more problems. And as you can see, this right here, this is already getting tacky. So that's good. This is getting tacky. So this will act as a barrier between those connections and the water. Yeah, so by the way, I was able to find that other piece. It was stuck inside the door, so it goes right there. So there's three on that side and two on the other side. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. It's pretty much, it's dry enough down here. And um, I cleaned up some of the uh, excess goop stuff that I put on there. I uh, got the speaker tight. And I went ahead and put a zip tie on this harness here. Now, like I said, your harnesses are going to be a little bit different than mine. So I'm just going to pull some of the slack out, basically, so that I can bend it with my fingers around into that loop and go in from the bottom and just push it up into that hole and then it drops into place. And then this harness clips into place. That harness clips into place. And you want to make sure that you feed this harness through so that you can get your window mechanism working and then basically I'm just going to put it on the hooks so I'm going to rest the door on the top and it just kind of goes straight down it's going to catch on that hook and then you can kind of line up the this plastic guys to make sure everything is going to pop into place so don't forget to do what I did guys so Okay guys, so now that we got everything back together, it's really a good opportunity to go ahead and check everything, make sure it works, so I'm going to start the car. This sounds normal so far. crackling noises, that's good. Uh, this video is about done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Alright, peace out.